Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. In this one we'll talk about error handling strategies in our ASP.NET Core applications because I think there are two major strategies in which we can go about handling errors in our ASP.NET Core applications and I want to present them to you. Now before we get started I want to say one thing. This topic about exception handling in general is a very dogmatic topic that kind of like spawns a lot of discussion similar to the discussions around the repository pattern where there are of course arguments for uh, uh, pro and cons for each of the approaches that, that I will present here. But what I want to do is actually to walk you through those approaches to try to understand what are the benefits, what are the pros, what are the cons of each of these approaches. Of course, I will also tell you about what my personal preference is and what I think it works best for my applications, but that's for sure not a rule that really everybody should try to accomplish or try to implement in their applications. I really just want you to to be informed about the different possibilities and then take your informed decisions whenever you need to take them. So that's the whole point of this entire discussion. This being said, let's get started with this topic about error handling strategies. And the first one that's also maybe the most straightforward because it's kind of like in line with what you usually learn during uh, our courses or university or during our first uh, programming years, it's to actually, well, use try catch blocks and throw exceptions. And what we have here is a regular API, a very, very simple one, but still layered with the usual layer that we might have in our ASP.NET Core applications. And here I have, for instance, this post controller, and I have this get post by ID. Now, here, what I would do in this controller in this case is I would do a try and okay, if everything's okay, then I will return this okay. But then uh, if I have an exception, then I catch the exception and uh, well, I log it because usually we want to log these exceptions and then we retrow them. Now, what happens afterward, we already described in a different video, I would have either an exception uh, filter or an exception handler middleware that would kind of like get this exception and generate then an exception or error response for the consumer that made a call to my API. Uh, but that is, I say, out of scope of this video. If you haven't watched the other video about uh, how we can use filters or exception handling middleware to actually treat our exceptions in our API globally, then there is a link here in the description of this video. Also, there's a card here somewhere in the corner upright that you might click and you would be able to actually go and watch that specific video. Now, with this approach, what happens is that here I also have, for instance, this post service. And in this post service, I use the repository, of course. And as I use the repository in this post service, I also will have a try catch block here because the post repository, it might throw some errors. It, the errors might come from entity framework or for, from any other ORM that we are using or directly from SQL if you are kindly uh, like executing directly code to SQL via a SQL command or something like that. Now we want to catch this exception and then of course, once again, maybe log this exception and throw it. Now, the first thing that we have to notice here, and here, once again, the discussions are kind of like heated, and I would just really advise you to take everything with a grain of, of salt, try these approaches, try to understand how they work and what's actually best for you. Now, the idea is that we might actually want to try and catch the exceptions in every layer of the application, because what we want to do is, for instance, if we get here an SQL exception, maybe I want to transform this to a custom exception of my application. Like I have, for instance, a I don't know, data access exception that I have created and in which I might add different other information that might be useful when we want to log the information, like maybe the provider that we use, the query that we executed or things similar to that. So. It is really common uh, that we would like to maybe catch these exceptions that we have here from the repository, transform them or create a new exception that we will throw afterwards. Of course, the original exception we will paste in or put in uh, as the inner exception for that one, as it would be a best practice and that would be the good way to go. On the other hand, there are there is the other approach here when it comes to throwing these exceptions directly is that, OK, we don't really need this try and catch block here uh, in the service. It's enough, theoretically, if we have this try catch block here in the controller 
because this would catch eventually all the exceptions that may come uh, from downstream from this get post by id method and that would of course also work and there shouldn't be any problems but in that case you don't really know exactly at which layer your exception was created so pros and cons for each of the approaches then there is the other side that might say okay we don't really want to have try catch blocks in the controller we just have a try catch block in the service and yeah we do all the catching here and then we throw it and if the exception is thrown and we get oh, okay it started from, from, from this action we don't really care the exception is thrown and it would be handled once again either by the exception filter or by my exception handling middleware so also this approach might be okay now this general idea of throwing exception and basically breaking the application flow uh, has a lot of contenders or people that don't think that this is actually a good idea because first of all or one of, of the most important things is that exceptions or exception handling comes with a cost in terms uh, of performance and by the way uh, i am preparing a video on how or what exactly the cost of exceptions is from a performance perspective so stay tuned to this channel subscribe to this channel hit the notification bell to be notified whenever new content comes in so that you are notified when the new video will arrive now the idea is that okay we know that it has these downsides that uh, okay we we might have different problems and here comes the second exception handling strategies that is also my preferred way of working with errors or exceptions in my applications is to actually not throw exceptions at all now you would ask how would this even work now the idea is and we can go here back to this application layer and instead of throwing exception and instead of having my services just okay i i would return a post here no let's think about a little bit more conceptually and what i will return from my service is always not a certain entity or a certain collection of entities but what i would return is a service result meaning what is the result of my service or my service method being executed and the result of course could contain some payload like if we have some um, some information that we want to return but it could return for instance or it could include some errors or the message of the error that was encountered during the execution of uh, this method so in order to do this what we do here is we'd add a new class here in my service layer and i would call this class service result and this class it would be also a generic class for now it would be a service result of t and we'll see exactly why this t might be important now what we want to return or usually as a bare minimum what we want to have in this concept of a service result and by the way if you are using handlers you can name your class handle result or anything similar to that so you can name uh, this idea of result whatever it fits best for you operation result handle result service result it doesn't really matter conceptually is that you kind of like have always a certain object that is uh, the return type of your service calls or of your handle methods or similar to this now the bare minimum that we would need for this to work is here a property of type bool that is error let's call it is error okay uh, so we have a get set what we need if we have an error i would like to have public string and that might be null uh, it would be the message of the error and let's maybe call this property directly error message now if you want for instance to gather if there are several errors or exceptions that happen during the execution of the method you would also maybe like to catch them all and create maybe a list or a collection of strings that represent the message of each of the error that that was encountered but in this case for simplicity here we will just leave this with a simple string which would contain the error message and last but not least what we'll have here is we'll have this public t and uh, we'll call this payload and this payload property will contain the result uh, in case everything was successful now of course if we have an error this might be also null uh, so let's have it nullable and here i have a typo so i guess one thing for things to work correctly would be to type them appropriately now that we have this class we can go back to our post service 
And in this case, we can actually do a little bit of stuff here. Now, the try catch block remains because the repository could throw us some exception because the repository might use a connection or something that, that we don't really directly uh, uh, or th that we don't own. So and we know that they, they might actually throw exceptions. So what I would have here is, for instance, service uh, result. Let's call this a uh, result. And uh, we can even uh, yeah, new it up. So that would be uh, no problem with that. Uh, and uh, of course, here would be if I have a service result, it would be a service result of post because this method is supposed to return a post is if everything is successful. Now, what we do here is that when we try and everything is OK, we actually don't return this. But what we will do here is now in this result dot payload, we just set the payload uh, to post repository get post by ID. And it would be this what we have on the other line, uh, GUID dot new GUID, and we should be good to go with this one. And of course, in this case, we don't really need this line anymore, so we can just a bit like this. Cool. So this is the result dot payload. Now, if we have an exception during this guest post by ID from the repository, we would go into this catch block. And what we do in this catch block, well, we will not throw anything anymore. But instead, what we'll be doing here is go to our result uh, and say that is error is equal to true because I have an error here. And also on the result, I would say that error message and I would say this is equal to the message from the exception. It would be like this. And then what I will do in the end, I will just return result. So I would return my service result. Of course, this would also mean that my method signature would have to return a service result of post. It would be something like that. And now we should be good to go. So now I have totally refactored my service method here. And then I can go over to the controller. And of course, in this case, I don't really need this try catch block anymore. So we can just simply delete everything. And here we can say of our result equals a post service dot get by ID. And uh, yeah. That should be actually it. I guess we have to provide here a GUID, new, new GUID. Uh, but the idea is that, uh, yeah, in that case, we will just reuse the GUID from there. So GUID dot new GUID. So it's okay. Let me go then in the post service because in this case, we can just uh, use the post ID that we have. So that was a slight mistake from my part. Sorry for that. Uh, kind of like this happens sometimes cool so we have then refactored this so let's go back to our controller now we have this result and if the result we can simply say if um result of course we have to even format the if correctly so if result uh, dot is error so in that case i would return maybe let's say a bad request but of course here, what we would have, but I, I will come to this just in a few seconds. Uh, otherwise we just return, okay. And uh, result the payload. So this is actually what will be returning in this case. Here, I would have to return the bad request, of course. Here you could even return internal server error or things similar to that. However, the idea is that of course, based on the error that you might have, you might want to expect this and return different type of results. Like for instance, you could return this bad request, but you can return internal server error. So you can fully customize what you want to return as an action result if you have an error. The idea is that I would even maybe go to the base controller or yeah, I would create a base controller and have there in that base controller class a method that I would call something like handle error result. And if I would have here result is error, I would just call that method that method would look into the error, may, may try to understand the type of the error that we have, and based on the type, it might return different results. So I guess you get the idea. But the whole point of this strategy is that we do not throw any errors. If we have exceptions, 
we just catch them, we add them or aggregate them to the service result object, and then we look into the result object, and if it is an error, okay, we generate something that is specific uh, for that error, like a bad result or internal server error, but if everything's okay, we just return the payload in an okay action result, which is actually very, very fine. Now, the, the pros of this approach is that, first of all, you don't have to throw a lot of exceptions. So from a performance perspective, this might be a little bit better. But on the other side, the flow of the execution of my application is actually not broken by exceptions that might happen occasionally. Now, there is one last thing that I would like to say when you have this or when you go for this approach with a service result or a handle result or operation result or whatever you want to call that, you would still need to have those uh, either exception filter or exception handling middleware in place because the application, you don't know, might still throw some exceptions at some points that you cannot or that you cannot anticipate directly and in that case we still want to have kind of like this global layer of handling exceptions and returning an appropriately formatted result to the consumers of our api so going for this approach with the service result doesn't mean that we can actually get rid totally of this exception filter or of the exception handling middleware no we should still keep them but from my point of view and this is what why i prefer this strategy or this approach is that the flow of the application kind of like is maintained and from a performance perspective we don't have to really uh well clutter our application and and create maybe problems or performance problems due to exceptions being thrown all the way throughout all the stack of my application or all the layers of my application. And that's why I really uh, tend to have a preference for this strategy instead for the other one where we just throw the exceptions everywhere where, where we can basically throw them or where it makes sense. And of course, going back to the service result, because you might ask this, uh, actually when we have this error, we can still, for instance, maybe this is something that I forgot, we can still use the logger because we want to log the exceptions that we have in our application. So I would say here log um, error and still I would log maybe the exception message or the entire exception. So this depends on your logging strategy and on logging, I have an entire playlist. So you can go to that playlist and check out the different a type of logging that we can do here and how logging works in ASP.NET Core, how we can use logging providers with our ASP.NET Core applications. Everything is covered in that logging playlist. And I will leave, by the way, also a link to the playlist in the description of this video if you are interested. Cool. Uh, this being said that that's mostly it um, if you did enjoy this content don't be shy and feel free to share it with your colleagues with your peers on forums or wherever you think that there might be people interested in this content just feel free to share it and i'm sure that they will appreciate that and if you didn't subscribe to this channel already please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell button so that you get notified whenever we have some new content here on this channel uh, this being said, once again, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.